This training material is the property of Accessible Tech Planet. Use of this material is restricted and permission must be sought before use. Do not sell or reproduce in any format without the permission of Accessible Tech Planet. Lesson 4 A quick overview of the keyboard and how to identify your operating system. In our previous lesson, I talked about how you can identify the keys on a desktop computer. Now that we've learned how you can boot your computer and shorten it down, we have JAWS already. So it is important for us to just run through the keyboard, that's the key on it, and learn what they do so that Anytime you come across them, you know what you are up to by pressing any of them. This will also enable you to hear their names spoken aloud by JAWS. And after this, we're also going to talk about how you can identify the operating system you are using. If you switch on a computer, how do you identify which operating system is on it? If you are following, I have divided the keyboard of a desktop computer into three segments. But today, as I'll be working on a desktop, I will also be working on a laptop computer. I have here an HP laptop and a desktop computer with me. We have divided the keyboard into three. First is the word processing compartment. The second one is the navigation compartment and the third one is the numeric compartment so let's start with the word processing compartment if you put your keyboard flat and you move to the first row just like I have described in the previous lesson Touching the keyboard straight, you know, from the left side, then we'll be moving to the right. The first row if you touch the first key there, that key that stands alone is the escape key. So if I press it now, you will hear Jaws saying escape let's try escape i'll press it again escape so that's the escape key the escape key is what you press when you mistakenly open a program and you want to go out of that program not necessarily not necessarily closing it but you want to go out of the program sometimes it does you know close a program but it is not all the time if you open a Microsoft Word for example pressing ex escape will not close it but if I go into the Windows environment like pressing my Windows key search box edit type of text you just heard search box edit so that means I'm on the 
start screen. If I press escape, it will disappear. Escape JAWS Professional. So it works when you mistakenly launch some programs and you want to be out of it. All right. But if you are talking about applications, if you open any application, escape cannot close it for you. So that's the work of an escape key. If we move to the next key, that's moving straight to the right, we have the function keys. I told you in our previous lesson that the function keys are divided four by four. You have the first four, the second one, the third one, then you now have three set of keys okay at the end of the function keys now if i press the first one which is f1 we are going to hear f1 let's do it f1 so that's the f1 once you pick a topic and press enter on the two the f1 if you press it anywhere it toggles help that's help mode okay maybe you open an application and you launch the f1 it's going to toggle on the help mode of that application right now if i press the next one f2 that's f2 then let's go f3 that's f3 if i press it press another one f4 that's f4 let's go f5 f5 f6 f6 page escape f6 f7 f8 that's f8 F9 That's F9 F10 Menu That's bar F10. option Escape Leaving menu bar F11 That's F11 F12 F12 Escape Now, the function of these keys is not what I'm going to be telling you right now but as we advance in the lesson you will learn their functions but it is important you know their names. Yes, most especially these function keys. Just note the names, then as we advance in the lesson, I'll be telling you what they do, apart from the F1 that I have explained. Because the functions differ. Yes, what you will use F4 to do in a particular environment is different from what you use it for in another environment. Now, after the function keys, we have three set of keys. Yes, just one, two, three, just three of them. The first one from the left is print screen. Print screen. All right. Print screen is a key you press to take the screenshots of a computer and send it to the printer. Yeah, that's what it does. How to do that? You learn it in our subsequent lesson. The next one, after the print screen, moving from the left to the right, do not forget that direction. Let's press that one. Escape. Scroll lock off. That's the scroll button. Okay, you can toggle it on or off. Scroll lock on. Scroll lock off. So it is off now. now. The last one. Pause. That's the pause. This is a media button. When you are playing a file and you just want to pause it without using the key combination to pause such player you can just press the pause. pause button and it will work you can also use it for other functions which i will talk about in our subsequent uh, lesson all right so let's go to the second row don't forget we are still talking about the keys on the desktop keyboard so the second row the first key from that row 
graph. That's graph. Don't forget, we are taking it from the left to the right. Then, followed by one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, zero, zero. Dash. Followed by dash. Equals. Equals. Blank. Blank. Now, that key that says blank is the backspace button. Yes. If you trace those keys from the beginning and you are tracing it to the right, the last key is the biggest. Yeah, it's the biggest among them. That's the backspace. Blank. All right. So I press escape to escape. clear the screen. Now let's move to the third row. The third row. The first key on the third row is the tab key. That's the tab key. If I press it, it won't say anything. And that's because of the version of JAWS I'm using on this desktop. This is version 2020. But if you press it, on your own desktop or your own laptop if you are using JAWS 2018 or 2016 or just 18 it will pronounce the tab all right so the second key is Q Q so we are moving to the alphabet all right let's just run it through W W E E R R T T Y Y U U I I O O P P Left bracket That's left bracket Right bracket That's right bracket And the last key on that row is also the biggest That is the enter button Escape press. Enter so You heard that Let's Press again. Enter. That's enter button. All right. The alphabetical arrangement is similar to what you have on the typewriter. All right. Now let's go to the fourth row. The fourth row. The first key here is caps lock on. Yeah, that's the caps lock key. That's the key you can use to toggle between a cap I mean between capital letter and small letters when you are typing. If you press it once, you hear caps log on. If you press it again, you hear caps log off. But on some computers, you have to press it twice to switch the capital letter mode on and press it twice again. To switch the capital letter mode off let me tell you why if the keyboard layout of your jaws is switched to desktop you press it once but if you have it switched to laptop mode this caps lock key doubles in function it functions as the screen reader's key. That's the JAWS key if you are using JAWS. If you are using NVDA, it functions as the NVDA key. Alright? If you press it the first time. But if you press it twice quickly, it functions as caps lock. So that's why you need to press it twice to so toggle it on. And press it twice to so toggle it off. So I'm going to press the caps lock once now caps lock off I just toggled the capital letter mode off so moving forward straight down to the right A you have letter A S S D D F F G G H H J J K K L then after L you have semicolon semicolon 
After the semicolon, apostrophe. you have apostrophe. Then after that, you have backslash. Backslash. All right. Now the key next to that is also the enter key because the enter key is long. But if you are using some of the keyboard that we have now. Um, you don't have the enter key as long as you have it on this one I'm using so it depends on what you have all right the keyboard you are using that will determine how your enter key will look like all right so we are moving to the next row and the first key is the shifts if you press the shifts it won't say anything Yes, it won't say anything at all because it is not a key that should talk. It's a modifier key. But if you are typing and you press the shift key to do certain things, of course, it will pronounce its name. So after that is backslash. the backslash. That's another backslash. All right. But let me mention most of the keyboard you will not get this backslash after the um, shift button you get z z okay just like you have it here this is the second key z is the second key here but on most of the keyboard it will always be the first key so you need to explore your own keyboard to determine what you have after that x we have x c that's C V V V N N M comma comma period period that's your full stop slash that's slash that's the forward slash then after the slash you now have another long key that's the right shift right so you now have two shift keys the left shift button and the right shift button so moving to the next row that's the last one escape let's press escape the first one you have the control key all right it's one modifier key that if you press it it won't say anything yes because we are not in the environment where the key is supposed to work now the second key is the windows key search box edit type of text as the windows escape. key jaws profession escape then followed by menu alt. bar options the navigation yes if you press the key you will hear your computer saying menu bar but it will not happen all the time it happened because I am on a particular application if I am not in any environment where you have an application at focus if you press the alt key it won't say anything so after the alt key you have this long button is the longest yes is the longest of all the buttons on the keyboard and that's the space space menu sys escape menu bar escape leaving menu bar let's press that again space so that's space after the space you have another alt key that's to tell you that you have two alt keys the left alt and the right alt and after that you have another windows key Search box edit, type of text, escape, so, JAWS professional. On Windows 10, the Windows key takes you to the start screen, or if you like, you call it search screen, where you can search for any application at all and launch it. After that, you have the application key. Then, the last one, you have the right control key. Alright? But, not all keyboard has application key if you don't have application key and you need it an alternative is for you to press shift plus f10 you hold down your shift and press f10 that's gonna toggle on what 
the application key will do for you and you can just go ahead and work on it all right so we're done with the word processing compartment then we are moving to the navigating compartment now like i described in the previous lesson while i was explaining the general description of a computer now the navigation compartment starts from three keys yes arranged in a special way you have one at the top then you have another one uh, below it and beside that particular key you have one by the left then another one by the right all right meaning you have jaws version two without escape then down arrow if i press it it's not going to say jaws down version arrow two escape. No. it's going to be reading what i have in focus then you have the left arrow then you have the right arrow it will not it will not um, say anything because uh, we are not in an environment where it should work now so if i move up there are six keys here arranged three three you have three at the top then three below it they're so close to each other all right now the first three now the first three at the top the one at the left that's the first one the first key from the left is the insert key all right so if you move to the right that is immediately followed by home, home key then the last one page up that's page up so let's move down to the last three keys j yes Julian. the first one i pressed that said j you can see the pitch of jaws going higher if you are using nvda2 such would happen that's the delete key all right so that is immediately followed by end, end we have home, home okay at the top then end. end at the bottom of that key then the last one page down page down just like you have page up page up you know at the top of it so that is all about the navigation compartment now let's now move to the numeric compartments the numeric compartment if you look at the shape it has four corner yes and that's how it is on all keyboards but each keys hmm, works for multiple things yes we're not going to talk about everything here but i'm just going to let you know the important ones while we'll touch on their functions as the lesson progresses so let's look at the first key don't forget the direction moving from the left to the right all right let's look at the first one at the top num lock on good you heard num log on num num is number number log on num lock off okay it is logged off now i just pressed it the second time so if you have this key toggle on num lock on yes if you press the second key slash you have slash the third key star you have star then the fourth key slash star dash dash let me press it again dash dash i'm gonna clear this screen escape now let's move down to the second row seven you have seven eight eight nine nine now there's a long key here yeah after that nine is a long key all right we are going to be coming across it even when we move to the 
third row. That's another enter key. Oh, sorry, that's the PC cursor. Yes, the PC cursor. 789 escape plus. So, but if we toggle the num log on, that's the number log. If you toggle it on, it works as plus. But if it is off, it is the PC cursor. Plus. That's it. Plus. So let's move to the third row. Four. There are four. Five. Five. Six. Six. And here's that long key again. The plus. We're not going to press it. So let's move to the fourth row. One. That's one. Two. Two. Three. Three. Then here's another key. Yeah, just like that one I described, you know, it's also long. They have the same shape. That's the enter key. Four, five, six, one, two, three, enter. So you can hear that. Let me clear the screen and press it again. Escape. Enter. Yeah. You heard those numbers because they're already on the screen. So that's why the enter key has to take them in and Hence, the reason you heard it being pronounced. Escape. So, that's the enter key. Then let's move to the last one. Zero. That's zero. Period. That's points. All right. And here we go again. That same button you hear, the enter key. We're not going to do anything with it as it is. Let's just leave it. But if I toggle the num log off, num log off. Good. This key, the last row, yeah, the last row, the first key by the left, okay, is another insert key. Yes. So when you are looking for insert, you can either use the one you have on the navigation compartment or come to the numeric compartment and use the first key that you have at the last row yes that's another insert key all right next key after that j juliet good if you listen that was exactly what happened when i pressed the delete key you know when I was talking about the navigation compartment. So that's to tell you that this is another delete key. If the numpad is on, you will hear period. Yeah, that's points. That's, you want to write two point something. So let's practice it. Num lock on. Let's press. Period. So that's points. The essence of these num log that's the number log is if you want to use the computer as calculator yes for instance you can press eight plus plus four four eight plus four and if i press the enter key it will tell me the answer but that will not happen now because we're not on calculator yes so let me switch it off. Num lock off. Yeah. So that's all about the desktop keyboard. So let's quickly switch to laptop. I'm just going to be explaining a few things. Yes, because the arrangement of a laptop key uh, differs. For instance, if you are using Lenovo, what I'm going to be saying here will not even make any sense. Yes. But if you are using HP, everything I'm going to be saying here, please pay attention to it because you need it. So the best way to identify your keys when you are using a laptop is one, get a sighted guide. If there is no sighted guide, you can toggle on the just keyboard help yes the way to do that is to press insert plus one let's try that 
keyboard help on. So, keyboard help on. If I press any key, it's going to tell me what that key is. Let's go. Es escape performs the standard Windows escape command. That's it. I just press escape key. Now let's press another thing. A barrel moves to the prior line and speaks it. You can hear that. It's going to tell you the name and also try to tell you what that key functions for. Down arrow moves to the next line and speaks it. Let me press another one. Right arrow moves to the next character and speaks it. Delete deletes the item with the character focus, then says the next character or item gaining focus. Yeah, so if you are done, you can switch it off by pressing the same key. Holding down your insert key, then press 1. Keyboard help off. So, keyboard help off. Now, on a laptop computer, the function keys that I described for you, sometimes, if you want to use them, you have to press another key with it so that it can function. Now, if I press F1 on this HP laptop, you will never hear F1. You will hear another thing. Or if I press F2, you won't hear F2. You will hear another thing entirely. So let me press F2. MK will click. That's it. MK will click. That's because the F2 is made to perform multiple functions so if i want to use f2 there's a key i would hold down for it to pronounce f2 let me do that i'll tell you the key later f2 so that's f2 so on your own laptop if you are pressing the function keys and you are hearing another thing entirely please just look for that key that i'm going to be mentioning later press it down before you can execute your function key all right now if we move to the second row the arrangement is the same you have grab one two three four five you know they're just the same but what i want to really talk about is where you have the control the alt the windows you know and the space bar so let's move down there if you have a laptop that should be the last row on your word processing compartment now i want you to do something tracing your key from the left if you count before the space bar if you count the keys you have on my own laptop i have four all right just before the space bar if if i'm tracing it from the left if you have four that means the first key will be the control key in some cases it will be another key we call the fn key function key all right and if function key is the first thing you have, it means that you are going to have the control key after it. But on this HP laptop, the control key is the first, followed by the function key. That's the key you have to press. If you are pressing your function key, your F1, F2, F3, and they're saying another thing, or you're hearing another thing, you need to press the function key down then press the f1 or f2 or f3 whatever you want to or whichever you want to press now that key is immediately followed by the windows key search box edit type of text yeah you can hear that that takes you to the search screen i'll press escape to go out of it escape jaws professional and after that you have the alt key menu bar options to navigate escape leaving menu bar yeah so when you press it that toggles on the menu bar so it's it's the same thing after you have the space, space then after the space you have another 
Menu bar option. The navigate press left or right arrow. Escape. Leaving menu bar. Then after that one, you have control key. Yes, that's the right control. Okay. Now you can see the difference on the desktop key arrangement. After the right alt key, you have the windows key. That's another windows key. The right windows key. Search does not exist on an HP laptop, but on some other laptop, you find two Windows keys. But on HP, no, you are just going to have one. Yeah, so after the right alt key, you have the control key. All right, if you move from the control key, you are going to have the right, I mean, the left arrow. Yes, after the left arrow, um, there's a particular key. In fact, two of them, not even one. Yes, one is at the top, then you have another one below it. That's the up arrow. Jaws version 2020.2001. And the down arrow, Jaws respectively. Version so if you move from that one, you have the right arrow. All right. So, if your hand is on the up arrow and you move up, just move up like you're going up now, the first key is the shift key. That's the right shift key. You know, just like you have the left one at that position I told you, it's the same. So, but on the up arrow, you have the shift key. Then on the shift key, you have the enter. enter key. After the enter key, you have backslash. the backslash. Then you then have um, the back space. All right. So moving from the backspace, um, you have your function keys. You know, that's the role you have your function keys. Now, the numeric compartments if you move from your backspace and you move up this way now your numeric compartment is the key you are going to have that's if you move to the right yeah from your backspace then the next key if you move to the right that's your norm log on all right and if you press again, lock off. yes, so you can carry out the same step I told you on the desktop keyboard. If you have your num lock on, num lock on. then the next key after the num lock key slash. is slash star. star. So it's, it's um, the same thing. Slash star dash. Then you have the dash. And if you move down seven, seven eight, 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 nine, nine, this is the plus seven hundred eighty nine plus. Yeah. So if you move down four, four, five, five, six, six. If you move down to the next one, row, one, two, two three, three. Then there's another long key, just like you have it on the desktop. That's the enter key. Then let's move to the next row. Zero. That's the zero. Four, five, six, one, two, three, zero. Period. That's the points. Yes. Then if I toggle off the num log, num lock off. This key acting as zero would work as another insert key. Then followed by J. Delete. Juliet. Now you would want to ask where is the first insert key on an HP laptop. If you move from your backspace, that's the backspace, Land. this is the backspace, then just move up. You see some keys before the num log. Num lock on. Yes. Num lock off. So just move to the top of that key. Okay. And you have how many keys? One, two, three, four. Yes. The first key, tracing it from the left, home. is the home. Then the second one is end, end followed by page up. page up, then the last one, page, page down. down. All right. Now, before the home, home is J. delete, J. 
Julian. Yes, that's the delete key. So you have two delete key. You can either use the one up here, hey. or you go Julian. to the one you have at the numeric compartment. Hey. Yes, Julian. so two delete keys. On some laptop, you just have one. So that's the arrangement on the laptop. All others, they're just the same thing. You know, that's the way you have it on the desktop. That's the way it is on the laptop too. Like I told you, the best way to identify your keys are one, get a sighted person or you can also use the JOS keyboard help okay which you can toggle on by pressing insert plus one so i want us to try something let's toggle on the JOS help keyboard help on. yeah that's the keyboard help so let's press one of the function keys here that's the f1 f2 blah 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 windows f1 you can hear windows f1 mk wheel click yeah it's not going to tell you what it does you just be hearing the name of the key if i hold down the function key that's the key after the control f2 so that's you're going to hear f2 it will not announce what it does yeah the reason for that is simple the reason is this because this keys functions different ways depending on the environment you are so it is difficult for jaws to announce everything it does for you all right it's not like when i press the up arrow a barrel moves to the prior line and speaks it of course you're going to hear that because after that, it does nothing. Enter. It does nothing. If I press shift key, it won't say anything. And that's because it performs multiple functions. So for just to be telling you when you are in MS Word, it does this. When you are in Excel, it does that. It will take time. Yes. So you are expected to learn that on your own. That's the way it works. But before I end this lesson, I also promise to talk about how you can identify your operating system. So just come along with me as we also go through that. And please, like I always say, pay attention. And if you have any question at the end of the class, you can contact me using the phone number provided or if you want me to tell you the phone number again it's simple it's just 080-6160-9134 you can also send me an email using the email I have provided in the about me section knowing your operating system since 1985 when Microsoft hit the market with the operating system, various ones has been out. And that is why it is very essential for users to know the OS he or she is using on a computer. If you know your OS, that is your operating system, you'll be sufficient and proficient on how to use it. So, how do you recognize the operating system of your computer? Before we even go there, when you hear that word operating system, what's the meaning? OS or operating system is everything software on your PC. Without the OS or the operating system, you can't do anything on your PC. It includes the software 
component and environment on your PC. And everything that has to do with installation on your computer. You see why it is compulsory that you know your operating system as a user? So, let's go right ahead to knowing our operating system. The first method I'm going to talk about is using the start menu. On Windows SP, Windows 7, Vista 8 and 8.1, when you press the Windows key, that's the start menu, what you have on them is start screen. But on Windows 10, what you have is start windows. All right. One other way to quickly know is when you press your start menu key, that's your Windows key on a computer running Windows 10, you hear search screen. So this is a computer running Windows 10 here. Let me press the Windows key and let's see what we're going to hear. Search box edit type and text. Search box edit type and test. It's only on computer running Windows 10 that you will hear that. All right. If that doesn't help, here is another method that will always help 100%. You can go to about Windows by using your run dialog. However, we're still going to learn more about run dialog as we advance in the lessons. So to access your run dialog, you press Windows plus R, the Windows key, hold it down and press letter R, then release your hand on board. Windows R run dialog, type the name of a program, folder, document, or internet resource, and Windows will open it for you. Open, edit combo, shell X folder, 107, to set the value, use the arrow key. So we have the run dialog open right now. You're just going to type what I'm going to say now. Type WinVar. W-I-N-V-E-R. Yeah, that's the short form of Windows version. So let's go. W-I-N-V-E-R. Winver enter about Windows dialog. Microsoft Windows version 1607 OS build 14393.105 copyright 2016 Microsoft Corporation. All rights reserved. The Windows 10 home operating system and its user interface are protected by trademark and other pending or existing intellectual property rights in the United States and other countries slash regions. OK button to from what you have just heard, you can hear Jaws mentioning something about Windows 10. So whatever version of Windows you are using, you can get it from this about Windows. Don't forget, it's Windows plus R. Then when the run dialog pops up, you write WinVar. W-I-N-V-E-R the short form of Windows version, then press enter. Listen to what JAWS would read. And from there, you can know the version of your OS.